Hi, and welcome back to Exploring with Emma and Stu on a special edition. Today, we've brought you to North Wales, to the Dunorwick Quarry, where we're going to be taking a look at the Anglesey Barracks. Now, the Anglesey Barracks were basically the houses where the quarrymen used to work, and they were built in 1870, and there's actually 22 of them, and they're quite well known, so we thought we'd take a little exclusive look at these just alone. So now we're going to go into the area where Emma is going to do a very fine explaining. So despite their name Anglesey Barracks, these have nothing to do with the military. And in fact, uh, it's, it's well known that a lot of the men who worked here were actually from Anglesey, but not all of them. Um, they would have come from all the villages afar, but quite a lot of them did come from Anglesey. And of course, that's quite a long journey. They didn't want to be traveling every single day. So they would have stayed in these cottages just during the week and traveled home to their families at the weekend. Now, the living conditions up here were obviously quite poor. There was no mains water or electricity up here. And in fact, all the men that would have lived in these particular barrack houses would have shared just two earth toilets between them that were situated on the outside of their houses. So as I was saying, there was no actual plumbing up here. In fact, the men here had to collect all the water they needed from a nearby stream, as well as all the coal for the fires had to, to be lugged up those massive hills from the nearby villages. So we bring you to one of the little cottages, don't we? And we're going to take you for a little tour, which isn't going to take very long because of course they're not very big. They're not very big, but also there's a lot of them. I think it's 22. There is, is uh, right? two rows of, I think, 11, 22 11. in total on this particular site. On this site only. But the living conditions, Emma, I've heard that they were quite actually quite bad. They, were, they, yeah. they weren't, really shouldn't even been habitable. Not really. I mean, this is basically just slate sort of laid on top of each other. It would have been cold and drafty. I mean, we've got a beautiful day today, but you can imagine what it would have been like in the winter time. I mean, I heard they lined the walls with newspaper. I've actually seen some photographs where they actually did anything they could to keep those drafts out. I mean, there wasn't it, there's no windows in here, um, which is a shame because there's a beautiful view on the other side. Um, like maybe that was to stop it from being so drafty. But despite that, I mean, there would have been fleas, there would have been rats, rats in here. And we were talking about quite a grim time to be living in. And also, um, how many people up lived in these places up to? Each cottage, well, each cottage could have had maybe up to four men in it. If you had a family member that... Um, that was working here, then you're expected to share. I believe that the rent was like one shilling. Um, I'm not sure if that was a month or a year, but see, each of you were expected to pay the shilling, however see, many one, was in yeah, here. Well, see, like one shilling per dwelling, yeah. right? Per person, yeah. I would say. And the worst part is you had to build these yourself. Uh, I, don't, I, think, I don't actually know who built them. I think they were built just by the quarry, yeah. um, obviously with all the bits of slate that was laying around. Okay, so we're going to go and have a quick look around and uh, we'll Show go from there. Show you some there. features. So now, we've, uh, obviously, we're in one of these little dwellings, yeah. uh, these little cottages, if you want to call them a cottage. They're more, they look like more like kennels, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's, there's some remnants here that are, are amazing. I think I'm going to have Emma. Show us yeah, around. Give you a little tour. There we go. Right, so here we are in what was the living area of this very small cottage. I mean, I'm not a very big person, but no. as you can see, I mean, it's you know not much wider than, than me. Um, over this side here, we'd have had just one little fireplace. Um, you'd have had a stove in there. That would have been the only way of obviously keeping the place warm, as well as um, cooking all your food and things. Uh, Washing machine? <laughs> I don't think they were quite lucky enough to have that, but probably just a sort of a little area, small storage area. I mean, these there's not much space for anything. Um, You'd have had probably some seating around here where I guess they would have just tried to keep themselves warm. What else can you say about this? I mean, it would have been lit by um, either paraffin or candle light. So with no windows, I should imagine these were probably quite dark, even during like the daytimes. But just through here, we've got uh, one last little room. <laughs> that's it, that's all you get, two rooms. And this would have been the, been the bedroom area. And as I was saying earlier, you could have had up to four men sleeping all around the edges here. Um, again, you can imagine it would have been dark during the day and dark during the night and probably quite cold. So you may be wondering why, with the conditions being so awful here, these people decided to spend their Monday to Friday actually living here. But back in their days, obviously, we didn't have proper roads and the transport systems were 
but poor at best. It was an awful lot better than that huge journey they would have had to have made from places like Anglesey and, and maybe further afield up to, the, uh, up to the mountains here back then. Now the conditions here were not only poor, but they're also quite dangerous. It's well documented actually that in the late 1800s, a man named Hugh Roberts, who was living in one of the nearby uh, barrack huts, uh, was throwing some dynamite. Uh, I assume it was one sort of frosty morning and um, he actually managed to blow the dynamite up in his house, of course, instantly killing himself, which is really quite sad. I'm assuming that's only one of many, many stories of incidents like that. But we've got one more feature that we're going to take you for a little look at before we finish the video. So we're at another part here. Thanks very much, um, obviously, for yeah, that uh, story. It's, it's nice it's very to give sad. you a bit of a sort of an actual sort of an account of the people who actually lived here. It also gives you an idea on the conditions, health and safety. Absolutely. All that sort yeah. of stuff. Because nowadays you would have never have defrosted dynamite in front of very likely his his stove or exactly. his fire. I mean, that's, it's, that's it's, mad it's insane. Think, but. But um, we are at one more part of the of the barracks. Obviously, it's a very important part of the Absolutely. barracks. Absolutely, and it was very briefly mentioned earlier. And here it is. We do believe that we brought you to one of two outdoor toilets that yes. they had here. Now, we're looking at 22 houses here, yeah. up to four guys in each one. Yeah. That's a lot of people That's a lot using of people. these toilets. And of course, they didn't have plumbing in these toilets. No. They were just an earth toilet. I do hear they were emptied quite regularly, but still, you can imagine in the morning with all those men queuing up to use I know. these toilets. But I mean, literally, not much left now. They're this a is bit all ruinous. you had. I mean, no different than a portaloo, really. Mm. And there we have it. Yeah, but I think it's quite obvious um, that these structures, which we weren't overly sure about them being here, must have been those little toilets. And just behind it, we've actually found remnants of a bit of a rubbish dump back well, from the Victorian times. I'll tell as well. you what, while we're here, we're not mudlarking. <laughs> but while we are here, have a look at this stuff. And Emma will start pointing it out to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. This uh, this is Victorian stoneware pottery. Um, now, having done a little bit of sort of, sort of interesting bottles and things from that, that era, we actually know that these are marmalade jars and jam jars and things. So it's, it's good to know that even though the conditions were quite poor, um, these men were actually eating quite well. So... We come to the end of the video, but not the information. Well, no, because there were actually men living up here right until the 1930s, until they were eventually and quite thankfully condemned in, uh, I think, 1937. They should have been condemned the first time they were built, Emma. Well, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you can only imagine um, what it was like with no running water and no electricity or anything. Fleas, rats, the lot. All the rest of it. And uh, I guess the men would have then had to have come from sort of the nearby village, right? I'm told, because this quarry didn't close until 1969. So, um, and now they're just left to uh, to fall down, basically. But, Picturesque. Uh, certainly one of the most beautiful locations I it think is, we've absolutely. ever explored. And although we have actually taken the explore of the entire Dinorwick quarry, we wanted to give you a special look just at these barrack houses because yeah. they're, they're quite special. They, they needed a video on their own and that's why we're calling it quite a special video because they're quite a special place. That's it. And give you a little insight into not just the, the interesting features that we can see at the quarry, but also the lives of the, the men that actually had to work up here. That's it. But as from Exploring with Emma Stu, please, please subscribe and like our videos. Yeah. It's really, really helping lately and we are nearly at our 5,000. We certainly are. And maybe even by the time this video is out. And we'd love for you to comment, tell us what you think, because we always comment back. Absolutely. And if you'd like to see a little bit more of our faces, <laughs> you can have a little look on our Patreon where we've done a few exclusive videos just for Wales, as well as dozens and dozens of other ones that you can check out as well. So and now that, that, price, is, that price has actually been put down to three pound a month flat rate. That's it. But from here in the hills of Wales, <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye. Bye bye.
well. Even though there was a hospital down, right down at the village, so.